Welcome to the Renaissance and welcome to The Needle in a Haystack for Negroes, a reply, part one. Remember, if there be one man who would deliberately resign his fellows to such a fate, persuading himself that Brazil could mitigate the Middle Passage by regulations, let him remember the language addressed to Parliament by Fox and afterwards recognized as an eternal truth by the nation. There can be no regulation of robbery and murder. Mr. Fox, 1851, and this is from the book Regulated Slave Trade from the Evidence of Robert Stokes, Esquire, given before the Select Committee of the House of Lords in 1849. And from Robert Stokes, Esquire, it may be asked, why enter on the question of regulating the slave trade when for half a century England has declared it piracy and 35 years have elapsed since the whole civilized world with one voice declared it to be a great crime. And this is from the book Regulated Slave Trade from the Evidence of Robert Stokes, Esquire, given before the Select Committee of the House of Lords in 1849, and this was published in 1849. The Enemy Within Have you ever followed any Negro or formerly Ethiopian freedom struggle? be it in the United States or anywhere else. Did you observe the high incident of saboteurs of those against the freedom, against the liberation? Did you try to ask them why they would be against the freedom of supposedly their own people? Do you follow our channel and videos and comments that suggest that Negroes could have sold themselves? We want you to note very well that the enemies within are usually planted ahead of time to pretend to be like the people they are targeting. So they are usually the ones you see that are always against the freedom of supposedly their own people. The pattern. Do you see how the Nigerian, going by the name Mr. himself alone, hiding under a false identity that he is a so-called African American, is always defending the slave master's lies against supposedly his own people? It's the same pattern everywhere. That's the same pattern you would see on the Nkalo West channel as well, where you read comments like, Wow, now I understand why my grandfather always said we are not African American. That man was adamant. We were not. I remember him mentioning Cherokee. Please bear in mind that if you were to engage any of those comments, you would discover that there are people hired to come and make those comments to deceive the Negroes because the slave master understands how the brain of the Negro works. And this is coded for him in Romans 10.17. The comments. The comments we are responding to are from the descendants of the slave hunters who insist that the slaves were actually sold instead of captured in Negroland, part of Africa today. And where a father can gather his children, walk for days and sell them to the European and Arabs. Remember the children are human beings and if you have children you are struggling with to bring up today, you send them on an errand, they don't obey you. Imagine how you could have taken one or two or three of them across bush paths where there are lions, tigers and all kinds of things to go and sell them to the Christians or Muslims or the Arabs and Europeans in a place that is about three or four days away. That is day and night we mean here. And it is the same group that are saying that a man goes to Arrow, they sell him and tell people he was taken by Chuku lessons from Europeans. Even as the Russian-Ukraine show-off is nowhere near the killings in Western Central Africa today, that is in Biafra and Ambazonia and in the middle belt of Nigeria, do we all see how the Europeans are rallying behind each other? Even as all those things you hear, Russia has done this, they have bombed this, most of them are just mere propaganda images. They are not real. And above all, do you see the Russian army raping innocent women the way Nigerian army did and does till today? The answer is no. Who trains that Nigerian army? Who was the Nigerian army before they became army in 1863? Those were the slave hunters. They are trained to see the Negroes as animals. So that's why you see that the Nigerian army will always be invading and burning houses over nothing. And then the slave masters media will now report it. Now we ask you, when the Nigerians that are to go and help Ukraine fight Russia are asked to pay $1,000, what does that tell you? 
it simply tells you that they are not interested in getting you as a fool you are in a place like the Nigerian army. People like Obasanjo or Kowon that killed their own people on the behest of little boys from Europe to come and kill their own people. They will never allow you. It doesn't matter how you see what we are saying. That should open your eyes as an individual to first see the Nigerian army for what it is, a terror group, an organized criminal terror group. But then, have you heard anyone say it is in Russia, it does not concern us in Western or Southern or anywhere Europe? The answer is no. If you go to Australia, if you go to New Zealand, if you go to Canada, if you go to the US, you will see the charities would have started saying, let us do something for Ukraine. But Biafra was in that situation worse than that with the British imposing an air land and sea blockade over Biafra inciting their slave hunting accomplices to kill innocent women and children and starve them because he knew that the people in the Nigerian army lack humanity and common sense and they were the slave hunters. That was why he could do that. Now we ask you, why are they not doing that in Russia and Ukraine? Because those are their own people. So you see the danger of having the unintelligent hermetic groups around you and that is why they want things like one Nigeria or one Cameroon. We shall look at that in a different video. You also see how those like Mr. himself alone, these are all Nigerians coming on this channel to come and tell us how it could have been supposedly their own people that sold themselves. You need to ask yourself, why would somebody be interested in telling you that his father was a murderer if such a person was a sensible human being? If you remember the case of Adobe Trushiamu Bani, if you noticed the person that said he was from their village said they came to that village they were not originally from there nobody knows where they came from that's how they come in they come in and live within you as an enemy learn everything about you before you know it they start dragging to become kings in your community they are visitors so. so as you see her writing that her great-grandfather who by our calculation would have been 10 years old when the slave trade ended could have been the slave trader you understand how they get those narratives so people will think that you are foolish for thinking that the person that did it has taken ownership, has owned up to it, but you are debating it. Like we told you, they come in and live as enemies within. At least the case of Mr. himself alone, you saw when we discovered that he was a Nigerian and how he kept away for a little while and he is back again. They will never change from that thing they are saying. Even when it's a lie, they can lie against a newborn baby. Watch that newborn baby get killed. They will maintain that lie. They will never change it. It doesn't matter what you say. It doesn't matter how many witnesses you have. Instead of them to change that lie against you, they will rather die. So in the Russia and the Ukraine show, has anyone heard the same way the Negroes would say, it is these African Americans, or it is Igbos, or it is uh, Niger Delta, or it is uh, Cameroonians, or it is Ambazonians. You don't see that because they know themselves but like we told you they are slave hunting accomplices they lack humanity they lack common sense there is no little sense in them so this is why you see the nigerian media controlled by the slave master and his accomplices they don't report on biafra and ambazonia but they are reporting about ukraine and russia that tells you how foolish the slave master tries to present the negroes as because they try to see every african as negroes whereas they know their slave hunting accomplices are not Negroes. They lack common sense and humanity. That's one thing about them. Lessons from history. When you hear the Europeans lie that the slave trade was where Africans were selling other Africans, do you not wonder why they lie about it? At least if they were proud enough to do it, they should have also been proud enough to own up to it. That's because they know their slave hunting accomplices, they lack humanity and common sense. This is why you will see they will go and incite killing of people in Biafra and Ambazonia, for example. Then they will send their slave hunting accomplices, people like Obasanjo, to come and say how it was Nigeria. Remember, nobody is Nigeria, but the image of a failed state rubs off on all of us. They come and say how it is the might, the power of Nigeria. Meanwhile, not even the bullet, not even the boots they were wearing or the guns they were using to kill people was manufactured anywhere in Nigeria. But like we told you, those in the Nigerian army, they lack humanity, they lack common sense. We will show you how they use them in a subsequent video. So if the slave master like the Europeans are not proud of the slave trade they did themselves, why do they not stop it? At least we saw the British Prime Minister write that they should go back there 
but this time not to be made to feel guilty. Now ask yourself, why didn't they say the arrow that did it we should look for them and get them to do it again? Because it wasn't the arrow, it wasn't the Negroes, it is them doing it themselves. But they know how to lie and unfortunately like we told you, they are slave hunting accomplices, they lack humanity, they lack common sense. Forgive us if you feel offended by what we're telling you, especially if you are in the army or you have parents in the army. Ask your dad, what is your duty? Your duty is to go and kill your brother or your sister on the behest of another man living somewhere peacefully in his own environment. Is that not shameful? And now, do you observe that the moles are always lying against supposedly their own people? Why would an African be claiming something that is not just shameful but also a lie? Lessons from the moles. As an African American, when Dan Calloway tells you that you are now Aborigine, do you ask yourself how that will help you? How that will give you a job? How that will provide you with better housing and environment? Why then do you think the slave master contracted Dan Calloway to misinform and deceive you into believing that you are no longer from wherever and that he didn't do the slave trade? And that you are not aborigine. Remember, one sensible question you could ask yourself is, where are the footprints and traces of your forebears? None. And then, he came from Europe. He doesn't deny that fact. But your own duty is to be denying where you are from. And they observe from Russia and Ukraine. Have you had Europeans anywhere, even those in South Africa, telling you that, oh no, it's happening in Russia. They will be doing everything to take care of themselves while they are slave hunting accomplices that lack common sense and humanity will be busy trying to demonize their own people. Imagine where the Ukrainians are asking Nigerians who want to go and fight Russia to pay $1,000 for visa fee. Remember, they know that the fight is not real per se. It's not as brutal. And if you are hearing about people being evacuated from Ukraine to Nigeria, it's impossible. No Nigerian that finds himself there unless the descendants of the slave hunters will go back to Nigeria because there is killing there because there are more killings in Nigeria than in Ukraine. The difference is the media is not reporting each the same way. That's all that is happening. So no Nigerian will ever try that. It doesn't matter how many videos they show you. Look out for them to show you those people. They will show you a bus. They will show you a plane. But they will never show you the people. And even if they showed you the people, it will be arranged. Gather some people and tell them what they wanted them to say. Something similar to what they did with Pompeo. When he condemned the killings in Nigeria, they went and brought somebody, put a gun on his head to warn Pompeo from saying that. So you will think we are all foolish. We don't know what is going on. You also saw how they went to hire so-called African-Americans to protest for one Nigeria. That's who they are. The slave master is a subtle beast and his slave hunting accomplices, they lack humanity and common sense, unfortunately. So the reason the slave master contracted Dan Calloway to misinform and miseducate you and telling you how you are aborigine is because he is afraid of Negro unity. He knows that if the Negroes come together, things will change for them. But he believes that the Negroes were created to be slaves forever and that's where the problem is coming from. And from the likes of Adobe Trisha Mubani, lying that her great-grandfather who was 10 years old when the slave trade ended could have sold the slaves. Nelly of Febu, that was a mole in the indigenous people of Biafra looking for freedom from the yoke of the slave masters one Nigeria, comes up to lie that the priests of Arochuku were the ones that sold the slaves and how people should pray against it. Now, if you claim that it was the priests, why don't you go for the priests to pray for what they did? You are now telling everybody to pray because we sold ourselves, no longer the priests. Then on another side, they are claiming that the priests were no longer from there. They came from somewhere and invaded the place and all kinds of lies. And on a side note, for those in IPOB and the Biafra struggle, it is very clear to all sensible people that Nelly Ofewu is working for the slave master and his slave hunting accomplices. But then, there is the question of Simon Ekma. Like we told you, we told you he was in the struggle. But what we can tell you today is, any day you hear him say Biafra or Idu, know that he has compromised. He has come out for who he is. He is dilly-dallying now, playing around it, supporting Nelly. But what you must look out for is, any day he mentions Idu or Biafra, they normally start with this or this. Remember, Nelly started with telling you who could have sold Nanikano and who could have stolen money. 
which is a footprint of the slave master and his accomplices. Remember, they are very good in false accusations. Then she graduated to telling you that Biafra is a scam. The same thing you see Chizromo Febu, also called the Jele Speaks or Udele, saying, and coincidentally, he has the same surname with Nelly of Febu, which should perhaps explain to you why Nelly changed her own to do so that people will start talking about her. Remember, the same way she's propagating lies, people will be talking about her and selling those lies. This is why you notice that the slave hunters in Nigeria, the Nigerian army and government controlled by the slave master, do not allow people to mention Biafra because they know that the Negro brain works in such a way that faith cometh by hearing. So they believe that if they can stop people from talking about Biafra, then they would have stopped the Biafra agitation. Likewise, they will be going with the videos of Nelly to Nam the Kano wherever they kept him and be showing him to see that you see the people have abandoned you. That's why Nelly is saying all those things. If you think she's stupid, she's not. That's what she has been asked to do. It's choreographed. So she will say Biafra is a scam, Biafra is evil, they are deceiving you. She is shouting in Nam the Kano on one part for you to think she is still with you. Then. The other message is for them to go and show Nam the Kano that you see that these people are not with you. This was one of your officers. That's the psychological part of the game. You don't need to believe us. Just watch and see. The slave master is never smart. Without his slave hunting accomplices, he couldn't have done all the evil he's doing against the Negroes, unfortunately. And likewise, the comments we are responding to today, claiming that it could have been a cell instead of a hunt raid and capture of the negroes by the army and the ruga ruga as the case may be first we want you to look at this interesting comment on the nkalo west town remember the europeans maintain that they are europeans wherever they are but the slave master convinces or tries to sell the dummy to the negroes that they are from there or here but they never try to allow them relate to where they are from remember when haiti and jamaica tried to join the african union what happened to it that's because those in power in Africa are the stooges of the slave masters who lack humanity and common sense. That's why they can't join. Otherwise, you would have expected they would have very easily joined. But you saw when Israel was rumored to have almost joined on observer status. That should tell you what we're talking about. The slave master is that subtle beast. So here you see from somebody that says it's solar function on the Nkalawe's channel says, You are so true. I can't even call myself an Australian because even though I was born here, I am of European descent. It was England that stole this country. They killed the indigenous who got in their way. Every 26th of January is supposed to celebrate it that we became a country of the Royal Empire when in reality most Australians are really celebrating the theft of a country the rape of its resources and people, the mother of its true inhabitants. The USA has exactly the same shame that it celebrates and as we both countries, racism is the key to brainwashing of history. Now you would think this person is just celebrating the Nkalawe. You may not observe that he has also been misinformed to think that the so-called African Americans are now Aborigines or Native Americans. Remember to ask yourself, how do you think the Native Americans will feel with these false claims? That's one thing you have to bear in mind. And we want you to compare it with that of Nelly of Fable being used by the slave master and his accomplices the same way, where she now claims that Idu is up to Cameroon. The reason they are sending her to do that is so that tomorrow the slave master can claim that the Ibus are trying to take other people's lands up to Cameroon. That's all they are trying to do with that Idu and Nelly of Fable. So that if you are listening to her, you know that she is lying and totally being controlled by the slave master. You don't need to believe us, just what and see. Please note that the aborigines of Australia are not classified as Negroes because they do not have the woolly hair of the Negro. That's why you will see that in some places, the aborigine wannabes will try to suggest to you that being African has nothing to do with the woolly hair. Whereas it's only the Negroes that were classified as having that hair at that time from that region in what was Negro land and Guinea but they are gradually taking it all over and further here you see comment like DJ Quiet Strong talked to my dad asking if any of his family were Indian he told me his great grandfather wore feathers but doesn't know what tribe now I am excited to find out more about my family now ask yourself these people that are writing this, most of them are contracted to do so. But the question becomes, how does this provide them housing? 
How does this give them food? How does this give them better qualities of life? They will still live in the lowest echelon of life. The slave master is doing this because he's afraid if they come together, they could demand for reparations and start having protests or start boycotting things like buses or anything like that in demand of such reparations. That's what he's afraid of. So he's now sending these people to come and see how they can sever their ties from any other part of the world. For example, there are Negroes in Brazil. There are those in Jamaica. There are those in Haiti. They are usually afraid of Negro freedom. That was why you see that they sabotaged Marcos Gave when he was doing his Negro Improvement Association, planning a back to Africa. And further here, we see that Peacefully Rounded claimed that, wow, now I understand why my grandfather always said we are not African-American. That man was adamant we were not. I remember him mentioning Cherokee. That's how they operate. We want you to compare what you're reading here with the type of things you read from Mr. himself alone. Remember, these are the same group. They understand what they are doing. And when we look at why they are killing people over one Nigeria, which is related to the slave trade anyway, you will understand why they are doing what they are doing. And further here, you see something like, thank you then Callaway for teaching us the truth. Now, remember when the slave master claimed that the truth sets people free. Tell us how this garbage then Callaway is feeding people with can be setting them free. And in the event you have forgotten, he started this nonsense when he posted that 98% of African Americans are in fact native Indians and are old millions. Remember, the millions is to decoy them into believing that they will get some money off it. So where is the money today? The same thing has metamorphosed into how they are now all aborigines of the United States. Remember, it doesn't talk about Brazil, it doesn't talk about Haiti, it doesn't talk about Jamaica, it doesn't talk about Europe, and they have gradually wiped out the Negroes they shipped to Europe, if you notice. But remember, if you are one of those misled to believe that Callaway is now working for the slave master, remember to ask him about this, America's second largest Indian tribe expels blacks. This was in 2011. If you ask him now, he's gonna tell you this is propaganda, it didn't happen and they will go and get somebody from somewhere to come and say it is a lie. Something similar to what they did with Mike Pompeo and even Trump when he condemned the killings in Nigeria. They went and got somebody, put a gun on his head to tell them to warn those people that nobody is killing anybody. The same thing they did when they hired so-called African Americans to protest that nobody was killing anybody in Nigeria. That's who they are. But like we told you, the slave hunters, they lack humanity and common sense. So that's why you see the Nigerian media will not report it. The slave master's media will not report it either. So you are in the dark. If you get killed, nobody hears about it. That's their technique against the Negroes. You don't need to believe us. Just investigate things yourself. And the title started by saying, The Cherokee Nation recently stripped citizenship from a majority of African Americans who descended from slaves of wealthy Cherokee Indians before the Civil War. So our question to you is, if they were indigents and they were still slaves, how does that provide them with a job today that we are talking about? The essence of telling you that story is for you to be misfed by then Calloway, they understand the brain of the Negro, unfortunately, but we leave that apart for now. And before we get to the comments we're responding to, let us reference the politics of culture or the culture of politics, Afro-Brazilian mobilization, 1920-1968, Kimberly F. Jones de Oliveira, The Roots of Inequality. On May 13th, 1888, Princess Isabel signed the golden law of emancipation and thousands of Brazilians joined in the celebration of slavery's end in Brazil. However, the thousands of former slaves who had helped to build and shape the nation were not incorporated into the political and social systems of Brazilian society. Once slavery ended in Brazil, former slaves virtually remained in the same political and social position they had occupied during slavery. So our question to you, if you believe the Calloway now is, are the Afro-Brazilians also stolen from the United States? Remember, he started this nonsense again by saying that the slaves were actually stolen from America, shipped to Europe, then to Africa and back to the United States and classified as African slaves. Always bear in mind that the slave master tells ludicrous lies. But what we don't understand is how adults believe it. You see somebody here that is going to ask the father if they were Indians. When you can look at people and know whether they are African or Indians, 
all they are trying to do is if they claim that they are indigenous to the area because they are going to ultimately wipe out the negro race anyway that is their plan it doesn't matter how you see what we're saying and further down we just see where it says for these members of the brazilian elite the institution of slavery had destroyed any potential afro-brazilians had of working as paid laborers in a capitalist society our interest here is the afro-brazilians remember the so-called african-americans today used to be called afro-americans but like we told you then calloway is contracted by the slave master to come and deceive the negroes let us also reference the abolition of the brazilian slave trade the journal of negro history by j e adams and published in 1925 here we see that the abolition of the brazilian slave trade the Negro slave trade in colonial Brazil. Negroes were first introduced into Brazil from Africa for sale as slaves in the 16th century. So that's our interest. With Indian slavery prohibited, the development of the sugar plantations and the mines of Brazil brought an ever-increasing demand for this form of cheap and easily secured labor. Now we ask you, when you hear people like uh, the real Macaba, telling you that it makes sense to enslave those that are already there. Ask him, why did they prohibit Indian slavery at that time? Because the Indians were the ones locally in the area. And if he thinks that the Negroes are the same strength as the Indians, let him look at something like boxing that we all know the origin. Let him show us a heavyweight boxer that was of Indian descent with the long hair or the type that we know them of, the type you will see in North America and in reserves the same way you would see them in the united states the same thing just show us how these two people one with woolly hair the other without could have been related and then when you claim that the negroes were already in the united states before whenever remember they were brought from europe as slaves and as an army to come and help them fight the indians the same way they are trying to recruit some fools from nigeria to kill them to come out and fight russia Perhaps they want to create a scenario where they can go and bomb the hell out of Biafra and Ambazonia and tell the world that it was because they were bringing soldiers to fight Russia. Understand the slave master for who he is, a subtle beast. And he goes on further to say, Statistics of the population of Brazil during the colonial period are incomplete and often are only estimates. In 1794, there were approximately 600,000 slaves in Brazil. At the beginning of the 19th century, the population was about 3 million, of which not quite a million were free whites and nearly 2 million were Negro slaves, the remainder being free Negroes, Indians and half-breeds. Then then Callaway is coming today to tell you that Negroes and Indians are now the same. You see how unfortunate it is, but like we told you, the slave master contracts them to tell those lies. We have given you three examples, Nelly of Febu in the IPOB with her Edu subterfuge, we talk about Ado Tricia Wobani and her claim that a 10-year-old great-grandfather could have been the one that sold the slaves. Remember, when they tell you a slave was sold, bear in mind that that child could have been as strong as Mike Tyson. And then you are going to capture him to sell. Where? To who? And how would the man take 100 people from your inland society to the coast? Remember, that narrative was when they claimed that the Negroes were not human. They were just like cattle. You just take them and they follow you like herds of cattle. That's why if you were following the BBC when they report the full and any herdsmen killings, they will always call herders. In your mind, you will think they are talking about the full and herdsmen as cattle rearers. No, they are telling their people that their full and accomplices are hurting the Negroes because the Negroes were considered bollocks. If you doubt us, put it in the comment section. You see where all these things are documented. And it tells us here that the figures for the slave trade for 1806 show that 38,000 were imported into Brazil in that year. Now tell us how less than 20 people in far away remote Aro could have been the ones that sold the slaves. Or one man called Adobe or Wogogo, whatever nonsense she went to concoct could have been the one that captured 38,000 people. Remember, if you read that chronicle of lies from Adobe Trisha Moban, you will see where she claimed that he was exporting his slaves to Brazil. Remember why she said that was to save the slave master, the British, who were behind the brutal slave trade. And again, because Brazil were the last to stop the slave trade 
and they speak Portuguese. So not many of them will read this thing to counter it. And even if they did, you're not going to say it because the slave master will be united. The same way they are united against Biafran and Bazonia. That was how they did it. You notice that no media is ever reporting the killings going on there. Even in Nigeria, even in Africa. Now they tell you we are all Africans. Where are those who are all Africans today? Why can't they be reporting it? That's because the slave master and his accomplices are well ganged up together against the Negroes. And he goes on further to say, at this time, there was no universal feeling against the institution of slavery. Large numbers of slaves were held in the colonial possessions of most of the European countries and the slave trade was carried on practically without restriction. Now they are telling you that what countries did could have been done by 4 or 5 or 20 people. What sense does that make? Remember when they tell you such things including how it could have been Negroes selling themselves, they are insulting your intelligence deliberately too. But further here it says, however, for the previous 20 years, there had been gradually developing in England under the leadership of Weberforce and Clarkson, a movement having for its purpose the abolition of the slave trade. Remember the same thing Dan Calloway is coming today to tell you that it never happened is what people were gathering to stop at that time. England was the world's capital of the slave trade, but it was started by Portugal. And further here, we see that to the Treaty of Paris between Great Britain and France, signed on the 30th of May 1814, was added an article in which the two nations agreed to use their influence in the approaching Congress of Vienna to induce all the powers of Christendom to decree the abolition of the slave trade, so that the said trade shall cease universally, as it shall cease definitively under any circumstances on the part of the French government in the course of five years and that during the said period no slave merchant shall import or sell slaves except in the colonies of the state of which he is a subject. Now we ask you, how do you think 20 people could have been the ones in what you call so-called Negroland today? could have been behind the buying of millions of people, capturing them with the army, but telling you it could have been a sell. Don't you see today, when you ask for Biafra, do they not send the military? The army were the slave hunters, they don't have common sense. It doesn't matter how you see what we're saying. If your father is the army, we're sorry. Ask him what and what are your jobs? How does it benefit humanity? What good does it do? Who commands you? Remember, somebody, one little boy from Europe, we called their uh, slave hunting accomplices to say, these people are asking for Biafra, go and kill them. And they go and kill you. That's all they know. They don't have common sense. It doesn't matter how you see it. If you doubt us, bring somebody from the army here to come and engage us and tell us what sense he can say he has as a human being. And so the same way you see them talking about Russia and Ukraine at the United Nations, do you or have you ever had them talk about anything sensible about Africa at the UN? The answer is no. That's because their slave hunting accomplices are the people from Africa at the UN. They know what they did. So look at what it says here. At the Congress of Vienna, in spite of the very active efforts of Castoria, the powers refused to take any further action as a whole than to condemn the slave trade strongly and to provide for annual conferences on the question. Great Britain, however, secured from Portugal the signing of a treaty for the abolition of the slave trade north of the equator and an agreement to negotiate further at some future time upon the matter of total abolition. Now, the reason they don't report on Biafra and Ambazonia is the world knows who they were as slave hunters. So if they reported on it, some people might be conscientious enough to say, it's time for you guys to stop this thing. So that's why they pretend not to hear. At least the case of Unam the Kano, if he hasn't done anything for you, it should prove to you that Christianity is a lie. There is no way the British would have given the Negroes Jesus or Mohammed if those things could save them from the slave raiders. It's impossible. This is like telling us that an armed robber that was coming to rob you gave you a machine gun to protect yourself with, knowing that he will be coming with a machete or say a pump action gun to attack you. That's impossible. This is our biggest proof that Christianity and Islam are not true. And above all, ask yourself, Namdekano is supposedly a British citizen. His rights are being abused over nothing. And then the same British cannot even issue a statement because they are behind it. It's as clear as day. It's in their nature. At least for their prime minister to be writing this in this day and age, that should tell you all you need to know. Why didn't he write that the arrow should now be called to come and start the slave trade again? 
if they were part of it in the first place. And now to the comments we are providing a little response to. Remember, the response is not to change them. Their minds can never change. The only thing that can change the minds of their slave hunting accomplices to tell you how bad it is, is if the slave master, especially the British, issues a statement to stop their nonsense. That's the only way it can stop. But otherwise, their minds are so made in it that there is nothing you can do about it. You can't convince them either. They will keep accusing you. They will keep lying and lying. They will never, ever withdraw their lie. Even if you caught them, they will look for something else to cover it.